name is John and today I'm going to be covering adjusting for kerf um, or as uh, Torchmate puts it, kerf with co compensation. Um, I, I say Torchmate but I meant hypertherm. Um, my particular plasma is a hypertherm so if, if you have hypertherm you can come and open up their uh, user's manual and you can find this estimated kerf with compensation. And for instance the process that I'm going to be doing for this upcoming project where I need some accuracy I'm going to be using 45 amp shielded parts on quarter inch thick mild steel so they recommend that a, you have a curve compensation of 0 0.066 now you have to realize that um, this number that they're getting is coming from a factory um, in a different location so there's some different environment variables than what I'm dealing with here I'm, I'm probably consider, considerably much drier here in Utah than um, up in Maine or Vermont or wherever they're located at and where they're, wherever these lab tests were done. However, I have found that um, the information in these charts gets me pretty close. Up to this point, though, if you go into my Torchmate so soft, CAD software into the tool library and look at my plasma, I have a uh, curve compensation of 0 .050, which is the default, and it's been fine up to this point. Uh, but I'm, I'm shooting for a little more accuracy again today. so. What I'm going to do is start adding in, as, as I uh, need more accuracy I'll for different thickness materials and different things. For instance, a sixteenth inch mild steel versus you know a quarter inch. I'll have to come and add these in. But what I want to do is come in here and add a one quarter inch plasma. And I'm going to assign it the kerf with that... Um, Hypertherm recommends 0 0.066 and that's just a starting number. I'm actually going to be running some tests, but I'll show you how that's I'll show you that how that's to be done. Um, I clicked on something on my screen. There we go. So 0 0.066 and that's going to be our starting number. And we'll go ahead and click add and we'll close this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a square box. Let's make it a 2 by 2 and not 24, let's make it 2, there we go. And then I'm going to create a 1 inch circle. And I'm going to center the circle within the square. So this is going to be our test piece. I'm going to do a basic, or a XOR weld. So if I do an all test to show you the fill, this is what I've created at this point. So let me go ahead and bring this down to 0 and 0. F7, F6 to zoom in on what I have highlighted. So I'm going to go ahead and create machine, machine create tool path, and I'm going to create a mail tool path. Um, I don't have to worry about my, my uh, material with the plasma process, at least not right here. But my tool I'm going to select is my, well, apparently it didn't save it, I didn't, must not have saved it. So we'll go and create it again, quarter inch plasma with a point zero six six. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and select that quarter inch plasma. And lead in, lead out, um, this is fine with me right here. I'm going to say OK. And you can see we've created our tool paths. Let me just move this to 0 and 0. And we're going to come out to Edit, or Layout, Sequence by List, Tool Paths Only. Say OK. And let's go ahead and export this. And I'm just going to drop it in my CNC folder. We'll call it. Um, accuracy or we'll call it kerf test so just because I like to double check things um, inside before I go out into my garage to make sure I didn't mess anything up I'll go ahead and import that DXF kerf test open um, save my g-code I will be running at 48 inches a minute that's how fast I cut my quarter inch plate and I just want to hit start and just make sure I do a test real quick. 
no tool selected. Um, that's because of the way I exported the DXF and I have multi uh, multiple tools. So I'll go ahead and start it again um, with Plasma selected. And I just want to make sure that I truly am only dealing with the tool paths and not the uh, regular objects. Okay, so that's complete. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go out into the garage. Um, we're going to cut this and we're going to take a measurement of the outside to see how close it is to two inches. We're going to take a measurement of the inside because it's a circle and see how close we are to the one inch mark. And then we'll probably, um, those are probably not going to be the exact same numbers as far as uh, how far off they are from the actual measurement. They'll probably vary a little bit, so we'll probably split the difference, adjust our curve accordingly, and cut another test, and that'll get us uh, as accurate as we can get with the plasma process, at least in my environment. Um, so let's go out in the garage. Okay, so I ran this test a couple of times, I only recorded once, um, but I wanted to show you a couple of differences. The first time I ran the test, I ran it with consumables that I had in my torch that I've been using for some time, and I didn't bother checking them to see if they were worn or not. So when I measured it out, I got 2.002 on the outside. That's measuring on the top. It's it's hard to tell in this video, but there's actually a, a bevel on this right side. Um, and th there's some beveling, just trust me, there's some beveling even though you can't see it uh, very easily. So 2.002 was the very top piece of it, not accounting for any bevel. And then on the inside um, was 0.984. So what I was going to do is split the difference and, and then show you how to do a curve adjustment on that. Then I remembered, oh yeah, I didn't change out my consumables. So I changed out my consumables for a brand new set. Um, you can see I have a much cleaner piece of uh, steel here that I tested it. You don't see nearly as much beveling as you did over here. And um, I did some re uh, checking on this and this is actually really, really close. Um, let me see if I can show you. So this is going to be difficult with one hand, but I'm going to, there is some beveling, so I'm measuring the very top, not going all the way down. And you can see I'm 1.001. .001. I would call that uh, easily within um, a standard of error, you know, accounting for the way I'm measuring this. 0.997, so I think I'm really close there. If I measure the outside, I'm going all the way down this time, including the bevel. 2.015, if I come up off the bottom and tighten that up a little bit, 2.001, again, that could easily be accounted for um, that thousandths of an inch by the way I just adjust this. So this is actually very nice and I'm, I'm grateful to uh, Hypertherm for putting out, putting out these uh, charts that tell me, you know, what kerf width I should be using. And so I'm, I'm actually going to trust this. This is very close. However, if you do not happen to have such these kind of charts, how do you adjust for it? Well, let's go over that. Okay, as you can see on the screen, I have three one-inch circles, and I have a tool path around each of those circles, which is represented by the number above each of them, um, as far as what offset I gave it. 0 0.066 is the number that I started with for my quarter-inch plate, cutting with 45 amp consumables at about 45 amps and 48 inches a minute and so with this setting I actually came out accurate enough there's no reason for me to go and adjust this and and recut it because I'm as accurate as I think I'm going to get um, however this tutorials for those that don't have manuals to start with or perhaps uh, some number like curve width to start with and so what I wanted to show you is how do you adjust for that the very first thing I would do is take the 
tool library defaults for the diameter of the tool or kerf width compensation. So if I select the plasma, for instance, this diameter, D1, or the kerf width compensation is 0 .050. And I think that's a good all-around number to go ahead and start with. Um, different plasma systems are going to vary enough that you got to have a starting point, and I think that's decent enough. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and uh, cut your part with that setting, and then you're going to have to make some adjustments based on your measurements. Now before I go into uh, another example that I have over here on the right side of the screen, um, I want to just cover the kerf width compensation kind of in drastic extremes. So 0 .066 is what we have currently in my setup. If I were to add a tenth of an inch, 0 .166, what it ends up doing is ends up expanding our tool path or moving it away from our actual part. And so if you were to take a measurement of this, this from this point to this point, it is exactly half of 0.166. And if you add this section and the other half over here, it adds up to 0.166. So if you increase the diameter, it's going to make your part bigger. If you decrease the diameter or the kerf width compensation, it will make the part smaller. So if I zoom in on this part, you can see I actually have, I took the tenth of an inch off and it the uh, tool path is running right next to the actual part. So with that in mind, let's come over here to the right side of the screen. F7 zooms in to whatever I have highlighted. And if I were to take my part and measure it, this is just an example. Um, if I were to take this outside part and measure it from here to here, and I ended up with a 2.016, well, you can see that my part is just a little bit big. Keep in mind, this isn't laser, and you're not going to have perfect results. Um, also, as you continue to use consumables and things like that, they are going to wear. You have environment variables that are always changing, so um, you're going to only get accurate to a certain point, and then you just have to call it good. If it was laser, you, maybe you'd expect a little bit more out of it, but with plasma, I think um, you're asking a lot out of it if you're going down to the thousandths of an inch. I could be wrong, but that's just me. So, if you measure the outside to outside edge and you got 2.016, for instance, um, you can see that it's 0 0.016 larger than the target size of 2 inches. So what you want to do is take that difference, the 0 0.016, and you want to shrink it down so you have to decrease the size of the tool or the kerf width compensation. So 2.016, um, our original kerf offset was 0 0.066. We subtract the difference, 0 0.016, and that leaves us a new kerf setting or a kerf width compensation of 0 0.05. So we'd come into machine, tool library, find our tool, and tweak it accordingly. Um, in this case, it's actually this one. Um, so I would, I would drop that down, go and recut things, remeasure, and adjust up or down, depending on uh, my results. Again, you would adjust this up when your part is too small. When your part is too large, you adjust it down. Um, what, one thing you do have to keep in mind is that when you cut arcs or circles in plasma, you're going to increase the bevel, and depending on different settings in your driver software, um, such as, I think it's the it's either the continuous contouring or max arc feed rate, I, I always get those confused, um, depending on how you tweak those, that could affect the bevel that you have um, and the size of the hole. So for instance, if you measured large on the outside, like 2.016, um, and then you went and measured the inside, you may actually be shy, small, like uh, instead of one inch, maybe you're at 0.975 or something like that. So in that case, um, I would actually take the outside reading. This is a personal preference. I would take the outside reading because uh, when you're cutting straight lines, you're going to be more accurate than when you're cutting arcs and curves. Um, but this is a good part to cut though to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking for. If you're aiming for maybe a perfect circle for some part, maybe you want to measure off the inside or go tweak your continuous contouring or max arc feed rate, maybe that'll uh, correct that issue for you, but um, that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. So um, just to summarize one last time, let me come back in. If you're large, um, you're going to take the the actual size minus the target size and get the difference. 
Um, and that'll be the same thing if you're too small. You just want to find the difference from the actual size to the target size. If you're too small, add it to your original kerf offset that you tested it with. Um, if you're too large, you subtract it, and then whatever you come up with is your new kerf setting. Go and add that into your tool library or tweak your tool library. Go and cut a new part and measure it. So this is how you adjust for um, your kerf width compensation. And again, if you don't have charts to start you out with, um, as I'm, I'm sure a lot of the plasma companies don't put those out, um, then go ahead and start with the point zero five zero as a um, starting point, and then you can adjust it from there. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching.